Hey guys, welcome to Ryan's Range Report. Today is not so much as a re review as it is a how-to on how to set up the Kestrel uh, from Applied Ballistics. It's the 4500 NV with Bluetooth and of course Applied Ballistics. If you have the Horus version, almost everything I'm going to explain today carries over. There's uh, just a few differences in the way that it works. The 4500 NV with Applied Ballistics comes with the accurately measured and trusted LITS library of G1 and G7 ballistic coefficients and it has ballistic truing and you can also load the software if you have the Bluetooth version through a PC. The 4500MV comes with features of plenty for this unit just like other Kestrels. Just scanning through some of the weather features you'll see that it has barometer, altitude, density altitude, user screens that are customizable comes with a compass and tons more but let's get into setting up a new gun on your unit. When you select a new gun you'll see a list of options to choose from. MV for muzzle velocity, drag curves which has G1 and G7 and the custom lits curves that are included. If you, if you select the custom curve you cannot change the BC on it. Below the drag curve you'll see BC which stands for ballistic coefficient. For the BC on your bullet, consult the manufacturer. Most of the time it's written on the box. Most of the times it will be a G1. Make sure not to mix up G1 and G7. You'll get very different results. I've selected the G7 drag curve for my 140 grain Burger hybrids. Below the BC, you'll see BW, which is bullet weight, 140 grains. Then BD, which is bullet diameter, 6.5 millimeter, 260, is going to be 200.264. Next is the bullet length. If the manufacturer does not provide it, just measure it with calipers. Next is ZR, which means zero range. It comes standard with 109 yards, which is 100 meters. My range is 103 yards, so I'm, put, I'm inputting that here. BH is bore height. This is from the middle of your bore to the middle of your scope. Lots of ways to measure this. Next is RT, which stands for rate of twist. My twist rate is 1 and 8, so 8 will be entered here. This should be on your barrel if you have a factory rifle. If not, there's other ways of finding that out. RTD is twist rate direction. And then next you're going to have your elevation unit. You have mill, true MOA, shooter MOA. If you switch over to click, it will give you options to update the value and will give you a click value readout. Next is MVCal for calibrate muzzle velocity. When you access, you'll see in the top right number besides MV Cal is a suggested range at the distance to which to calibrate muzzle velocity. It represents the midpoint of the supersonic range for the gun selected. For my range, I had not selected the speed I thought I should be at, so even though I think I'm in the 2800 range, the Kestrel thinks I'm at 2600, so I'm going to true it up here. Now this is just the initial setup for my Kestrel though, I can true this up out in the field. I'm going to the calculated drop menu. And I'm going to adjust to 8.1 mils, as that's what I have in my data book for 1,010 yards. I'll come back out, hit the cal button, and now it's calibrating. And if you look below, my MV Plus range has changed to 2797. Now I'm going to hit the power slash escape button, and it asks me if I want to accept the corrected muzzle velocity. Now that we have the new gun entered, I'm going to turn off the other guns I've made. I've made it with the AB software available for PC only which is needed to get all of the custom curves. At this time, it leaves a lot to be desired, and I really hope they update it. Right now, we're leaving user gun 2 on, and we're in AB mode. The E is for elevation, and the W is for wind. As you can see, even with no wind, the Kestrel is going to adjust for spin drift. Below, you'll see target and wind, and the zero degrees is the direction of the target. Also in this mode, you have environment, range card, and ballistics. We'll cover all of them in a second. For now, let's move back to target and we'll select the direction of our target. Hold the unit with the back facing the target and hit the camera button in the upper left. Press it again to lock in that direction. You can also do the same for wind. After this is done, you can do the same for the wind and point it in the direction of the wind. You can also go into the wind section, hit enter, and you can change the wind manually. WD being the direction, WS1 being the minimum and WS2 being the max wind speed. This will now give you a bracketed wind solution. You can choose to capture the wind for 
WS1 and WS2 while inside this screen. Now we have a 3 o'clock wind from 5 to 13 miles an hour shooting 1,010 yards. The first number on the left is your 5 mile an hour and the second is our 13 mile an hour wind speed. Also you can set up a range card for different targets. TS is for target speed and TD is for target direction. Then you'll see wind direction and WS1 and 2 again. Now you'll scroll back up and you'll have a whole other set of values for target B. Make sure that you make it active if you want to change to it during a course of fire. When I come back to the main screen in AB, you can see that I'm on the active target, which is A. Now we'll go back over some of the features we scanned over when we first got into AB. Environment lets you select if you want to update your dope with the information the Kestrel is receiving. It also gives you that outside information. Next is the range card. You select the increment that you'd like to see your dope in. Here we have 50 yards selected, and you'll see that the elevation, your WS1 and WS2 wind corrections, if you've selected a mover, it will give you the lead, and then you have your remaining velocity. If you notice here, I'm in the 2,000 yard range, and there are big black dots that are next to my remaining muzzle velocity. As I scroll up, they get smaller. The big dot means subsonic, and the small dot means I'm in the transonic zone. Next is going to be ballistic data. You can use this to get a lot of information for that specific shot. Well that should get you started in out using your Kestrel. Make sure and subscribe because we're going to do a more in-depth review of this product as well as some more how-tos on some of the other features. As always, thanks for watching and please share, like, and subscribe to this video.